My gaming life has always centered around 2D platformers and shooters, so I never would have imagined games that fall under the category cooking action puzzler would appeal to me. But the Lord works in mysterious ways, and so did a company called Media Entertainment. Their games employed 2D graphics exclusively in an era when 3D was all the rage, and I've reviewed some of them in the past, like Koro Koro Postanin and Qeen. But if you do a web search for media entertainment, these won't be the first games that pop up. After Pachinko Games, their most successful title was Yakiniku Bugyo, a puzzle game on the PlayStation that takes place in a barbecue restaurant. In fact, it was successful enough for the company to make two spin-off games with a similar idea, Nabe Kazuku and Yakitori Musume. Now, let's not sugarcoat things. The Japanese PlayStation library is overflowing with crap, and at first glance these games look like more bland cannon fodder for the shelf. But since I had enjoyed Media Entertainment's other games so much, I decided to give them a chance. And I'm glad I did because the trilogy of cooking action puzzle games is a breath of warm, musty air that harks back to a time when a weird little game by an obscure company would still get a retail release. First, let's look at the game that started it all, Yakiniku Bugyo. Yakiniku is essentially Japanese barbecue, and Bugyo originally meant magistrate or judge. Let's keep things simple and translate the title as barbecue master. The objective of the game is to satisfy your three customers at a barbecue restaurant by feeding them and keeping them full until the time limit runs out. You do this by cooking meat and vegetables on the grill and then passing them to the customers once they're cooked and ready. Does that sound a little too simple? Not so fast. Knowing how long to cook food at a yakiniku restaurant is an art that can easily be seen as a mark of social status. In order to keep your customers happy, you'll need to give them food just as it's been cooked to the perfect equilibrium. Not raw, but not burnt. You can place up to 12 pieces of food on the grill with the X button, which come out at random. There's beef, tongue, liver, intestine, carrot, pumpkin, and onion. And each item cooks just like it does in real life. Liver gets cooked through the fastest, while the vegetables all take much longer before they're ready to eat. And just as if you were at a real yakiniku restaurant, food items placed in the center of the grill will cook much faster than those on the edges. While I was still learning the game, I just didn't put anything down in the middle, although once you've become comfortable, you'll probably want to put vegetables in the center whenever possible. As the food cooks, it changes color, in the case of meat cuts from pink to brown, and learning to discern how each piece of food looks when it's done and ready is central to the game. It's a bit confusing at first, since there aren't any pictures in the instructions showing you what each food looks like when it's cooked perfectly, but thankfully, you'll sometimes get pictures of what to look for during loading screens in between levels. Once a piece of food has been placed on the grill, pushing the X button with the cursor over it will flip it over, or you can also hold X if you want to pick it up and move it somewhere else on the grill. When both sides are just right, you can pass it to one of the customers with the square, triangle, or circle buttons respectively. But just tossing any piece of food at any customer won't get you far, because each person has their own likes and dislikes. Next to each customer's picture is a food they like and one they don't like. Pass them a food they like, and their fullness meter will increase significantly. But if you happen to pass them the food they don't like, they'll get mad and their fullness meter will decrease, even if the food was cooked perfectly. Otherwise, you can pass them any other food and it will increase their meter a little bit, but any food under or overcooked will lose you big points. Oh yeah, and the customer's likes and dislikes will change periodically, so make sure to keep an eye on their icons. If you keep all three customers' fullness meters over a certain threshold when the round is over, you'll pass the level and go on to the next. The final round has only one customer, the Yakiniku Bugyo, or the barbecue master himself. He requires a lot more food to satisfy, but the rules are the same, so just keep the food coming and you should be good to go. Yakiniku Bugyo requires you to manage quite a bit of information at any given time, making it hectic and fun. At the end of the day, it's a one-trick pony. Once you know the routine, you'll probably fly through story mode. The good news is, Yakiniku Bugyo also offers two-player versus mode, and this is where the game really shines. You still have one grill and three customers to feed, but now two people are vying to win the customer's hearts. Each customer's meter starts out half blue and half red. 
If player 1 gives a customer a piece of food, the meter will fill with red. Conversely, if player 2 gives someone a piece of food, the meter will fill with blue. Whoever gets more customers' meters filled with their own color by the end of the round wins. So for example, if the first two customers' meters are 60% blue and the third is 100% red, player 2 will still win. This is loads of fun, as it's quite a bit easier to learn than something like Puyo Puyo, which takes years to master. And one round is only 90 seconds, so even with a room full of friends, you won't be waiting long for your turn. Yakiniku Bugyo is a shockingly good party game. Who would have thought? After the, quote, success of Yakiniku Bugyo, Media Entertainment released Nabe Kazoku. This time around you're dealing with Nabe, which is usually translated as hot pot. You've got a big pot of soup on a burner. Toss in meat, vegetables, fish, and whatever kind of ingredients you like, and grab them with your chopsticks once they've cooked through. Like yakiniku, nabe is thought of as being a food to eat in social settings. Nabe Kazoku places a lot more emphasis on the story than its predecessor. You play as Taro, a boy going to meet his girlfriend's family for the first time. As it turns out, the whole family are hot pot maniacs who come from a line of hot pot battlers and live the path of the hot pot. In order to prove your worth, you'll have to face various family members and other goofy characters in a hot pot battle. These battles are always one on one, and the point of the game is to feed yourself and get full before your opponent does. Food appears on its own in Nabe Kazoku, so there's no need to choose what to put where. You can check how far along a piece of food is done with the X button, and eat it with the circle button. There are three levels of doneness. Raw, almost there, and ready. When a piece of food is ready, it will say OK in English letters, but the other two levels are in Japanese, so this game does require a bit of language ability. Of course, you should eat the food when it's ready, but if you accidentally eat something that isn't cooked yet, your player will be stunned for a couple seconds, so when in doubt, definitely use that X button. Thankfully, in this game, food left in the pot will never overcook. Although food cooks at the same rate no matter where it appears in the pot, certain types of food cook faster than others. Things like tofu and in particular thin sliced beef are ready almost immediately, but other fancier ingredients like crab and puffer fish will take much more time before they're ready to eat. Which brings us to an important aspect of the game. Different types of food will increase your fullness meter by different amounts. Every stage has you eating from a different kind of hot pot with different ingredients, and fancier foods will give you more points. Most vegetables like onions or carrots are only worth 100 points, but meats like crab or shrimp are worth 300, so it's definitely worth focusing on those. You can also multiply your score by getting combos. You have a window on the side of the screen, and it shows the last three foods you've eaten. If you eat three of the same food in a row, it will start a point multiplier for whatever you eat next. Or, you can eat the three ingredients shown at the top of the screen in the special combo window for the same effect. The CPU is pretty aggressive, so you'll definitely want to employ this technique whenever possible. But my personal favorite addition to Nabe Kazuku is the inclusion of special items that appear randomly in the pot, and can be picked up with the circle button. There are four of these. Cook, Stop, Multiply, and Clear. The cook icon immediately makes all of the food in the pot ready to go. If you get this, just go on a feeding frenzy. Stop will stun the other player for a few seconds. Multiply will obviously multiply your score for a little while. And clear removes whatever food your opponent had in their combo window at that moment. These really add an extra layer to the gameplay and keep things from getting too redundant. But they're all represented by kanji, so if you don't read Japanese, it will take some getting used to. Since the standard game of Nabe Kazoku is already a versus battle, two-player mode is an obvious inclusion, and just like Yakiniku Bugyo, it's fun, hectic, and over quickly. For a game that's essentially an advertisement for a hot pot restaurant chain, Nabe Kazoku does a damn good job of being easy to grasp, yet deep at the same time. The third and final game in Media Entertainment's Cooking Action Puzzler series is Yakitori Musume. Yakitori is grilled chicken, and Musume means daughter or young girl. Yakitori Musume clearly places the most emphasis on the story out of the three games. You play a girl named Sasami, which also happens to be a homonym for a cut of chicken meat. Her father, who runs a small yakitori shop, 
suddenly dies one day and is instantly reincarnated as a chicken. If that isn't ridiculous enough, he then returns to convince his daughter that she must inherit the business and keep it running. I guess I should have mentioned that just because they put a lot of emphasis on the story doesn't necessarily mean it was well thought out. Anyways, in order to keep the restaurant in business, Sasami creates a menu item called the Yakitori Battle, which is where the real game takes place. The goal is to fill up the customer as fast as possible by cooking grilled chicken skewers and racking up as many points as possible on the way. Food will appear on the grill automatically, and you can fan the flames with the X button to make the skewers cook faster, check how far along they've cooked with the square button, and once they're ready, feed them to the customer with the circle button. There are five types of food that appear. Chicken and onion, liver, skin, tsukune, which are basically small ground chicken patties, and green peppers. Hey, you gotta have some vegetables. The four levels of doneness in yakitori musume are raw, almost there, ready, and burnt. So you do have to make sure things don't cook for too long this time around. Just passing food to the customer once it's done will probably get you through the level. But to build a bigger score, you'll have to take advantage of smoke combos. When you fan the flames under a piece of food, smoke rises into the air and tempts the customer. If you make smoke rise from several of the same type of food, the customer will tell you they want to eat that food. Feeding them the food while the smoke is still lingering will start a smoke combo, and will continue if you build up more smoke and feed them again within a short time. To be honest, it's a clumsy and hard to understand system, and if you're just playing the game as well as you can, you'll generally get a combo of 15 or more at some point in the level. The one thing that sets Yakitori Musume apart from the previous two games is that you can acquire new decorations for your shop. Your score builds continuously across levels, and as you hit certain landmarks, you'll receive something for your shop, like different wall posters or chair cushions. You even earn new background music. In between levels, there's an option to customize the shop, and putting up different items will attract different customers once you've cleared the standard game and have opened up infinite mode. While this is an excellent idea and encourages the player to keep playing beyond the standard story mode, there's one little problem. Yakitori Musume's gameplay is the most basic and redundant of the trilogy. It's nearly impossible to lose, battles are short, and the combo system isn't particularly satisfying. And on top of that, the point requirements for getting items are way too high. You can play 5 rounds and not get anything. Gameplay-wise, Yakitori Musume isn't amazing, at least less so than the two games before it. But it still has the media entertainment charm with their characteristic art style and odd portrayal of day-to-day -day life. And it may very well contain the last piece of music ever written for a game by Ogawa Shinobu, who composed the music for the very first Valis. There was actually a sequel to Yakiniku Bugyo on the PlayStation 2, Yakiniku Bugyo Bonfire. But it's not really worth talking about, because they didn't add anything to the game. No new modes, no items, Nothing. Well, they added two new pieces of food, mushrooms and scallops. Wow. To think that something like this could come out in 2003, it's both beautiful and mind-boggling. Come to think of it, that's probably the best way to describe Media Entertainment's corporate culture. I honestly don't think making a profit was their first priority. And I respect that. Thanks a lot for joining me on this journey into gaming obscurity. Cook your food thoroughly, and happy gaming.